the, the disappeared children of El Salvador are uh, children who were separated from their families during the, during the Civil War. Uh, some of them were taken at gunpoint by soldiers as a way to punish the peasant families for helping the revolutionaries. Um, there are about seven or eight hundred documented cases of children that were separated from their families during the war. Um, only about 300 of those have been solved. There are about 30 cases in the U.S. and uh, a handful across the world. I'm Nelson DeWitt. I'm Roberto Cotto, and I'm one of the disappeared children of El Salvador. I grew up in the Boston area with, uh, with my parents. I was adopted. I have a, a little brother, Derek, and uh, we grew up. We were a pretty normal uh, American family, and uh, we went to Red Sox games. We went to summer camp. Uh, we had a lot of fun. And uh, growing up, I didn't know anything about my past. I didn't really know when I was born. Uh, my birthday. I didn't know what my name was. All we knew was that I was uh, I was in an orphanage for a year in Honduras, and that was pretty much all my parents could tell me. So I had a lot of questions growing up. Uh, I didn't always ask them, but I was always wondered who I was and where I came from. And then one day in 1997, when I was when I was 16, we got a phone call out of the blue saying that uh, there were people looking for me, that my family had been, had been searching for me for 14 years. And um, my father, my, my adoptive father, was the one who took the call and he almost dropped the phone. So my parents were both revolutionaries in the, in the Civil War in El Salvador. My father was a bodyguard and my mother did logistics. Uh, she was responsible for getting people and supplies in and out of the country. Shortly after my brother and sister had been born, um, my father was shot about an inch away from his heart. He lay in the mountains of El Salvador for three days, clinging on to life. And, uh, and one of my uncles gave him a, a blood transfusion, which saved his life. Um, after that, my grandmother took my brother and sister to Costa Rica to get away from the war. And then after that, I was born. Um, I was about three months old when a picture of my mother appeared in the newspapers in El Salvador. She was a wanted criminal and we had to leave right away. My mother took me, a little baby, to Honduras to kidnap this businessman. It was her and 12 other people. They worked together to clean the house, to take shifts and guarding this, this man that they had kidnapped. They had a padded cell in the in the bottom of their house, which they kept him with air conditioning and ventilation. But the Honduran government found out that they were there. They raided the house and they shot first and asked questions later. Uh, we don't know exactly what happened, but we're sure that my mother didn't make it out alive. So they put me in an orphanage and they put something uh, in the newspaper saying that there was this lost child. And of course there was no one there to claim him. And so no one came for me. And I was in, shortly after, I was put up for adoption. And um, a year later, on my second birthday, I was adopted. December of 1997, we flew down to Costa Rica to meet my birth family for the first time. And uh, we were greeted by 30 to 40 people at the airport. <clears throat> and it was, uh, one of the most overwhelming experiences of my life. Um, I don't, I don't even remember it that well because I think it was just so, so overpowering. But um, so I got to meet my family, my birth family. I've always been fascinated with the power of the internet to spread ideas and change the world. I think that we live in a really exciting, different time because we have these tools to to spread messages very easily. And the opportunity that we live in is that any one of us can create a video or a website or an idea that is seen by hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people. And we have the ability, we have the potential to change the world. We can uh, change governments, we can change corporations. And there's something truly powerful and wonderful in that. Uh, and it's very different from the time that my parents grew up 
in. They didn't have these tools. They had no way to change the world other than to pick up arms and to fight. And they paid a heavy price for that. So I'm here today to share my story so that other people can understand uh, what happened in El Salvador and what the disappeared children are going through, what, what, what our reality is, that we are separated all over the world from the families that we were, we were born with. And that's where I need your help. I need you uh, to help me spread this message, to help get this idea out there, because we're all very connected. That's sort of the one thing that I've learned from telling the story is that we, we're very uh, close to each other even though we don't know it. And um, if, if you help me spread this message, I think that we can all make things happen and make change. And that's sort of the way the world works today. So um, 